Let's do this. The Cult of Hockey podcast by the faithful and for the faithful. I'm David Staples of the Edmonton Journal, and I'm here tonight with Bruce McCurdy. Welcome, Bruce. Hey, David. And Bruce, we got some hockey to talk about, a real we game. We do. It was the real game, and it was a game. It was a good game. It was a good game. It was, it was, it was great to see a competent team within the Oilers organization. And that's exactly what we saw tonight was a, mm-hmm. a team that knew what it was doing. Uh-huh. And that uh, came through in this game in any number of ways to get a 3-2 win in their first game of the Calder Cup playoffs for the team against the Colorado Eagles, I guess they're called. Yep. Do you know where they're based? Yeah, they're someplace mm-hmm. called Lovelace or Lovetown or Love Boat or something. Uh, it's not Denver. Love Tron. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mayor, the mayor is Daryl Dawkins. <laughs> <laughs> That's your 1970s. <laughs> mandatory 1970 sports reference i remember he's the guy that took the glass out of the backboard a few That's times right. <laughs> rump roasting bun toasting uh i am jam chocolate fun ch- chocolate vanilla thunder slam dunk all right he uh bruce that was a really good game by the bakersfield team so we're gonna we don't have a lot of numbers to work with so we usually do the two good things two bad things and two numbers podcast about the orders, but we're just going to go through the plus with six things we noticed, three each, and okay. there'll be good and bad things. And uh, so, why don't you start? What was one thing that you noticed in in Bakersfield's three uh, two victory? Yeah, well, uh, the dominance of the Bakersfield first line, as uh, correctly identified by the home uh, scorecaster, and these were three guys that we saw in Edmonton at various times throughout the season, in um, uh, Brad Malone. Uh, centering a line with uh, Joseph Gambardella and Patrick Russell. And at the NHL level, those guys are just barely hanging on, right? Like they're tweeners. But the difference, it really shows the difference between the leagues that a tweener at the NHL level can be a solid, in fact, close to dominant player at the AHL level. And that line was actually involved in all three goals for the Condors in this game. And they, uh, uh, I particularly like Patrick Russell. You know, I see an NHLer in that guy. I mean, maybe I'm crazy because I know he's a little bit older. You know, Bruce, but I think man, the two he's of- a solid worker B kind of player. I see him as a bottom sixer. He can kill penalties, which is something the Oilers absolutely desperately need as a forward or two with a clue about how to kill penalties. And he has some talent with the puck. He, he got two assists tonight where both times were – he just got the puck to someone in a good position who was then able to make the, the play to to produce the goal. And just solid, you know, he doesn't lose battles. He doesn't get out of position. He's just one of these sort of Jonas Donskoy type of guys that doesn't hurt you. And every once in a while, he finds a way to help. you. So he's old for a prospect, as they all are. I mean, and, and Malone especially is no longer any kind of prospect at all. I think he's 29. Right. But yeah. I, I, I think the orders obviously they're going to need some cheap players and both Gambardella and Russell mm-hmm. should definitely be in the running for uh, four flying jobs. I thought Gambardella was the best player on the ice. Uh, he's a bulldog. He, eh? he just goes for it in these games and, and, and he's getting better and better at the AHL level. This is, his, I think, second full year at the AHL level, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. And uh, he's become a dominant player. Malone, the difference between Malone and the NHL and the AHL mm-hmm. is startling because he just <laughs> never carries the puck when he's yeah. in the NHL, but he's constantly carrying the puck and mm-hmm. making plays, and he made a number of nice plays. Of course, the, the nicest play of the, the of the mall was Gambardella's feed, cross-ice feed to Logan right. Day on the winning goal. But I agree with you that Russell and Gambardella should be in the running for fourth-line jobs um, in the NHL next year. They're just ex- exceptionally solid two-way hockey players at this level they're mm-hmm. cheap they're, and don't go signing another 34 32 year old 33 year old washed up nhl or who doesn't have anything to prove and is playing out the string orders give just count on some of these guys stepping up because they they're perfectly capable of doing so they've, they've got some players here first the the thing the uh so that was the first thing we noticed the second thing is going to be i just think the depth of this whole team is impressive and um you know it wasn't just uh russell and um uh, malone and gambardella playing strong two-way hockey games but we saw players like dave gust mitch Mm -hmm. callahan um luke esposito who's a who's a key penalty killer on this team 
Yeah. Um, uh, those guys. And then, you know, there's the, the, the top scoring line of Marodi, right. Benson, and Curry. Mm-hmm. But even players like Vesey and uh, Poli, there's not a, a he big, there's no real passengers on this team. And all six defensemen. I mean, I, I think Logan Day was the, he's the least impressive of the defensemen, but he was the first star, I guess. Based all he on did was score right. the winning goal. Yeah. Yeah. He scored the winning goal. <laughs> this is a really, this, this team, um, it's a really interesting team. It has outstanding depth and we'll see how far it goes. How far it goes. I mean, I don't want to, I've been, I'm way ahead of myself with this team, hoping that it has some real success, but I don't see well, any reason why it can't. I mean, it's going to be hard for Evan Bouchard to crack to this lineup. Get in there. Yeah. Well, you know what? They, uh, this is as balanced a team as I've had the privilege of watching like, you know, covering as, a, you know, the home team for a long time. Like, really, you look at the lineup and you, you got kind of everything you want in the lineup. I mean, obviously, at, at the minor league level and not the NHL level, but there's, as you say, no passengers. There's well-defined roles for their player. There's a real solid, two solid lines in the top six. A young scoring line, a more veteran two-way line, and a bunch of worker bees in the bottom six and the defense you know, there's six guys there, and there's three more in the press box. I really love that top line of Malone, Gambardella, and Russell. How they set the tone to get back to that group of players. They just they, their hard work really uh, is the signature of this of this mm-hmm. hockey team. And we're talking about a team that yeah, probably grinders, that, all three grinders. It's possible that the single most talented forward and the single most talented defenseman on the roster didn't play today. Yamamoto was hurt, mm-hmm. and. Um, Bouchard uh, is going to have a tough time cracking just the got, He just got into town now. So, alrighty. So, whose turn is it now? I guess it's your turn. What's the th- what is the uh, third thing that we've noticed this game, Bruce? Uh, oh boy, I did have a couple of things. Oh yeah, Willie Lagason. Man, this guy. Uh, he's a high event player, and he did have a couple of problems that turned into scoring chances against. Uh, he takes he takes risks. Boy, does he make things that happen, and is he ever fun to watch? Like he's greasy, he, you know. He doesn't mind. He doesn't mind uh, getting into the physical stuff, um, but uh, he also is getting involved in the offensive stuff. You know, and he made a key offensive play on both of the first two goals. Assist on the first goal, his point shot was tipped home by Malone, and then he scored the two-one goal off a really nice feed from uh, his partner Caleb Jones. Uh, but he got in deep in the zone, took the pass, and snapped her home. And you know what? In the last two minutes of the game, I think Lagerson was on the bench for about 15 seconds of the last two minutes. No, oh, he's and the he most played, trusted. He played D. consecutive shifts. Uh, there was a long delay. There was a stanchion loose or something, and he played before it and again after it and basically finished out the game. And boy, did he make some nice plays. Like there was one play that really caught my eye and the announcer's eye with about maybe 120 to go. And there was a point shot that got tipped. It was a good play, but I think it was Patrick Russell. Got a stick on the puck, and it kind of popped in the air, and it went into the corner. And Lagerson read it, and then just turned and dashed for it. And he won the race to it, and he just one-handed chipped it up the wall. And out, out of the zone it went. And it was because he, A, read the play, B, reacted to what he read, and then C, executed when he got there. you got to like all those things in a one-goal game with 80 seconds to go. That you think of... A young, sort of you know, quasi rookie defenseman like like William Lagason might be feeling the pressure at that point. No, Siri. Lagason and Jones uh, did have a few bad moments on the ice. They were out there against the top line of Andrew Egazzini, who's kind of a veteran scorer. Logan O'Connor, and who's the third member? Of that oh, uh, Jolly Michael Jolly. Um, none of them are real top prospects this this mm-hmm. colorado team doesn't really have isn't loaded with top prospects they have martin kout who's an eight i think he's 18 or 19 he was a first pick so he is one but he's he's yet to reach his stride and then they have um, aj greer who's 22 mm-hmm. and is probably the the top player on the team so like legacy and and jones had the, the toughest <laughs> job i thought that they both did very well and i was also really impressed of the three bursts i think i was most impressed with ethan bear because um, mm-hmm. he's been hurt, but he just stepped right in. And, man, he looks slick. He just looks so good at this level right now, moving the puck, making plays with the puck. And he's gotten uh, 
he seems to be more aggressive and stronger um, defensively. He's really digging in hard and and battling. So I I liked all of all three of those guys. So Bruce, the mm-hmm. fourth thing I noticed that we noticed in the game um, is. Let me just go to our scoring chances. It was nine to six for scoring chances, right. Brady scoring chances in favor of Bakersfield. Mm-hmm. So um, with 14-12 uh, left left in the game and Bakersfield was up two to one, uh, Starrett let in a goal, a terrible goal. Like Absolute it, it was, stinker. It was a yeah. shot from the corner and it, and it found its way in. And um, now you'd expect a team to have a letdown at that moment mm-hmm. to really struggle and um did not happen at all they did not get another grade a scoring chance for the rest of the game the uh colorado team they weren't able and and they were just swarmed honestly by uh, the condors it was a superb defensive effort and boy that was encouraging to see that kind of shut down play where they were they weren't even hanging on they just were they were uh you know uh, foot on the throat of mm-hmm. the Eagles, the, the Condors, <laughs> just where the Condors beat the Eagles and um, mm-hmm. Battle of the Birds. Flying high. And uh, that was impressive to see. I really uh, thought that, that was the, that they, they proved something in that first game and uh, huge game, of course, because the first two mm-hmm. games are in Colorado. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the road the last three in Bakersfield. The so road the, advantage was, you know, starting on the road sucked but now they got the best of both worlds they got a road win under their belt worst they can do is go home with a split and then they have the last three games of the series potentially on their home ice so colorado's really up against it already having What's lost the um fifth thing bruce oh five yeah well I'm kind of riffing off what you just said but more specifically how how uh the condors responded to that 2-2 goal uh, not just by shutting them down defensively, but by instantly going back on the attack and getting that goal back in 45 dominant seconds later, where it took them a few seconds to gain the zone, but then they just cycled. It was like a five, if not six-way passing play. I think even one of the players uh, left the ice because there, were, you know, there was three defensemen involved in the uh, in the build-up or the finish of the play, and they. They really hadn't been pushing the play offensively since they went ahead 2-1. They were kind of sitting on the 2-1 lead, and then that cheap goal happened. And it's just sort of, oh, we better get that one back. And uh, bam, 45 seconds. And once they got the one goal back, lead, one goal lead back the third time, that was it. They were able to hold it all the way to the end. What you're looking at over there, Bruce? You keep looking I'm watching. There. Yeah, I mean, this has a direct impact on our series that we're talking about, Colorado. The Avalanche just smoked Calgary Flames 5-1 to win the series four games to one, meaning that the Colorado Eagles can't be expecting any help coming back from the NHL team because the boys that are up there are going to be staying up there for a whole nother series now. Double plus good. I don't know who would have come down. I think there's a – maybe Calgary. There might be some players who might have come down to, to – if Colorado had lost the series, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, I I, am, I don't didn't even stop to figure it out. All I know is that if they, as long as they're winning up there, they won't be sending players down to uh, their you know, and affiliate. Of course, our hearts go out and our sincerest condolences go out to all Flames fans out there, eh, Bruce. It's you know I just feel so bad for them. I have to say I just don't know what to don't know how I can get through this podcast at this point. I just feel so bad. Yeah, it, it's 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 so uh, disappointing now, isn't it? <laughs> They got one. They won one more playoff game than we did. <laughs> it's so sweet. All right. This the sixth item. The last thing that we've noticed. I'm going to go to a bad thing, Bruce. Okay. Perfect. I thought that the top the the top scoring line, one of the most dynamic scoring lines of the year, Benson, Marodi, and Curry never really uh, got going this game. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some really nice offensive plays by the Condors, but not mm-hmm. not so many from that group of players. And, um, you know, these are young players, rookies. Marodi and Benson are both AHL rookies. Yep. And it's a playoff series. The The intensity was much higher than what we saw in the last we – were, we were watching the last games of the year far, far higher. And um, I think that was a bit of a lesson, as it often is for younger offensive finesse hockey players when they get in the playoffs. Um, 
just to step up. And it's a, you know, Benson, uh, there was a few bad plays made by Curry and Benson uh, mm -hmm. at the defensive end. And um, so that's one of the, the uh, for a team to win in the playoffs, everything mm -hmm. has to be working, right? There's mm -hmm. lots of good teams in the AHL in these playoffs. There's about there's about five or six really, really good AHL hockey teams right now in these playoffs. So the Condors are one of them. They're, you know, they're one of the five or six favorites, I would say. But mm -hmm. for the Condors to, to, to take it all, yeah. everything's going to have to work. Mm -hmm. Shane Starrett's going to have to not let in a crappy right. goal from the corner. And that line is going to have to really get going. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't have to be going every single night. Well, that's, that's the thing I was just going to say is that when you got a deep team of four lines, one line can have a a so-so game and your team can still actually win the game, which is an absolutely foreign concept to Oilers fans. <laughs> Isn't it? But, God. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> what? You could, your top line can kind of be mediocre or like semi-stink yeah. and you can still have a, actually a, a really good game because every other line is playing like in your six, in your three defense pairings. And, and, and if you give Shane Starrett credit, he made a, some really nice saves as well. There yeah. was a, a a couple uh, breakaway chances, or, or you know, yeah, he stopped really hard chances. almost a two on oh, about 30 seconds after Bakersfield scored originally to go up one nothing. And Starrett hadn't had much work up until that point. And all of a sudden, he's facing down, looked like two guys breaking in basically. The one guy took the shot, but he stuffed him twice on the shot and the rebound. And that was a huge moment in the game. And he, he had a, uh, a few other, uh, uh, top-notch saves but you know that that young line there was a few glimpses like curry made a couple of real dazzling moves mm -hmm. in traffic mm -hmm. and tyler benson he made one pass and it wasn't a chance because mike stanton or ryan stanton i keep calling mike stanton the baseball player ryan stanton had a real good look and he hammered a shot that just missed the net so by our we don't count it, but the spin around pass, Benson got the puck on the boards, and it's almost a no look, and he just spun that almost like a dry settle pass off the boards, off the backhand, right on the tape of the guy in, in good position. And you see, you know, these little glimpses, but obviously we want to see more. Yeah. Well, so far, so good. So, Bruce, I just let's just, we'll end it there. I just want to tell fans, um, th these AHL playoffs are cheaper to watch than any AHL playoffs that I can recall. I think it's 20, 25, 25 US for the whole the whole league for the whole league mm -hmm. and you know that's the price of a um, um, going to the movie one night here for an individual you get popcorn well it's about half the price if you get popcorn <laughs> um so it's not it's not a whole lot of money and the broadcast quality was okay tonight it's it's pretty good from Bakersfield as well so if you're a hardcore fan I I would not uh, it's 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 kind of fun to watch these games and we're going to be doing it so uh, thanks for talking tonight, Bruce. Yeah, we'll have player grades up here in a little while. I'm about probably halfway through. Should have them up by uh, hopefully midnight tonight. And uh, hopefully folks will follow along in the usual fashion. And, uh, okay, you know, they'll be a little probably more, um, I was going to say abrupt, but a little, little more um, concise. Like I don't have a million things to say about some of these guys, and okay. I don't know them as well, certainly some of the depth players. But uh just general observations and a few vignettes from the game action, and and uh, we'll uh, we'll follow the team as far as they go. Yeah, we're still learning their numbers, eh? So, <laughs> yeah, just getting it down. Thanks, Bruce. All right, thanks for listening, everyone. And in the meantime, and in between times, this has been another edition of the Cult of Hockey podcast. <laughs>